Brief, very brief. How many folks have heard of the refugio oil spill? Okay, so, so this can be even briefer than necessary because I didn't want every speaker to have to come up and provide a background of the refugio spill. So I will go ahead and do that now. So obviously it happened May of last year. The report indicated that there was a pipeline rupture near Figueo State Beach in Santa Barbara. The responsible party, Plains All-American, uh, estimated the total release at 500 barrels, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I say blah, 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 because although you know that those initial reports don't always get the numbers right. And it's also something that the public doesn't get either, that the whole point of this OES report is to get the report as quickly as possible so that resources and assets can be rolling as quickly as possible. Um, about 23 by 7 mile fishery closure happened during that spill. Uh, the, uh, I already said that. Uh, revised worst case release came out later at 101,000 gallons. Um, as far as I know, it's probably the actual numbers are, may or may not still be under investigation. I don't know. I think I saw our investigators here, but won't put and her on the spot. Uh, on May 19th, Governor Brown declared a state of emergency in Santa Barbara County, which is, for those of you who also know, and there's plenty of room up at the front, so please come in. Um, uh, allowed for uh, further assets to roll in, uh, greater funding sources, and there was a, a subsequent executive order to further expedite oil spill recovery in Santa Barbara County. Um, location, and I just realized I don't have a pointer. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, let's see if I get this right. Yay! Okay, so Santa Barbara is, hold on, where am I? I haven't seen this slide in a while. Okay, Refugio State Beach, Ventura, Santa Barbara. Okay, the initial incident command post was at Santa Barbara's Office of Emergency Management. Uh, we were very, very fortunate to be there. They had, we, I think we christened the facility, right? Uh, pretty much, and then uh, when we outgrew the facility, and obviously oil spills aren't the only thing that the Office of Emergency Management in Santa Barbara had to do. They had all their ongoing daily operations, so we were fortunate to have such a great spot to begin with, and then we moved to a warehouse area near the airport where we had much larger footprint and, and were able to get uh, let OEM get back to their, their daily activities. So I love this slide, so anybody who ever sees me do a refugio presentation sees some version of this slide. Okay, here's the ocean down here, cliff face, 101, and then underneath, right here is where the pipeline was. So the oil came from the pipeline, under, over the river, through the woods, past grandmother's house, down the cliff, into the ocean, down here, right? Okay, so it also was very interesting from that perspective because we had, because it was on the other side of 101, how am I doing on time? Okay. Because it was on the other side of 101, that's US EPA's jurisdiction. Marine, the, the other side of 101 is Coast Guard's jurisdiction. And so there were discussions early on about who was going to be the FOSC and then who was going to provide input as the other federal representative. So we had both marine resources as well as inland resources. And I could show you a million slides, but um, for the sake of time, uh, this is the, the spot up at the top of the hill bringing up oil. This is what the beach looked like just down past grandmother's house over the cliff early on. And this was Refugio State Beach the afternoon on the 19th. And others, I, you know, I just realized I probably didn't do any after pictures, which it's all cleaned up relatively. That beach, you don't see any more oil on it. Uh, we still have operations going on probably through the end of this year that has mostly to do with monitoring. So significant things that happened during refugio. So I was trying to figure out another way of saying, how is this different? Because we all know that spills are the same and different all at the same time. So some of the things that came during refugio is that there were two marine protected areas, MPAs as we call them, through Fish and Wildlife, um, which uh, created some additional questions and concerns on behalf of the environmental groups as well. Um, we had a very large fisheries closure, uh, probably one of the largest we've ever had. We had all the obvious fishery issues, but then there were other issues having to do with kelp harvesting. You have mariculture down there with abalone, and people were harvesting the kelp to feed the abalone to 
go out to the restaurant trade. And so we ended up doing a lot broader fisheries closure and sampling than we have ever done in the past. Lots of tribal and historical um, cultural issues. Chumash Indian Nation, uh, 2,000 to 5,000 members. They inhabited that coastline for a very long period of time and had sacred lands there. We had a, a variation of habitats from flat grain sandy beaches to rocky colder, boulder sand cliffs. We had a special excavator, and maybe Robert will talk about that a little bit along the cliff face. So, so our shoreline cleanup assessment teams had a lot of different environmental areas that they needed to take a look at and determine the whole question of how clean is clean. Okay, areas of special interests, uh, volunteers. How many folks know that we did volunteers down in Rikiki? Okay. How many folks know that those were people off the street? What we call, yeah, okay. So Cindy will talk about that. That was a, that was a big um, effort. Uh, down in Santa Barbara. Uh, Cindy will talk about the fact that we had non-wildlife uh, volunteer plan and one of the things we don't typically do is put volunteers out on beaches to clean up oil and sometimes you do things that you didn't necessarily plan to do. So um, again, I already talked about a bit of extensive fisheries closure, cultural and tribal integration. Wildlife operations was interesting. I've been with Oscars since the beginning, since 91, and this is probably one of the largest events that we had where we had significant, two minutes, great, significant mammals, okay? You probably know that we've been going through a drought, and uh, over the last few years, they have a what they call a significant mortality event, right, and SME, right? We're, we're seeing a lot of uh, mammal pups coming in dehydrated, um, malnourished. This was an event that was going on already, and then you add an oil spill on top of it. So we had, we had that as well. We also um, had a very involved, um, informed, and uh, organized uh, NGO community. Uh, Santa Barbara is probably one of the places that's considered the birth of the modern environmental uh, movement with the Santa Barbara well blowout in 1969. And so um, it provided us with the opportunity of figuring out better, um, more integrative ways of communicating to that NGO community that don't necessarily have a great idea about how emergency response goes, how decisions are made, what do you mean by a unified command, why can't we evaluate all the decisions that you make before you make them? So it, it, it gave us a good opportunity to evaluate how we want to deal with those types of things. And I think that's at maximum effort, about 1,300 people out in the field, vessel numbers, boom numbers, scat teams. Um, we did have a flight restriction at one point. And then the last slide um, was personnel effort. And it's not, uh, it's not what you wouldn't expect. Gosh, that was too negative. So, so you start out slow, you meet sort of this a maximum effort in the middle, and then you start tapering down. Okay, and again, we're not back down to zero yet. So this is June 21st. Okay, we did some integrated, I've gotta be close to two minutes now. Okay, so I think that's it for me, uh, because I'm gonna force everybody else to be on time, so I should be on time too, which many of you know is not very common. Okay, so wrong, or where's my, Where's my, did they, where's my team to help me do these PowerPoints, please? My IT, that's the word I'm looking for.